Oh. Through the tournament. Back in the day, there was a man named Driz. Okay. No, I mean Driz. He came in this <laughs> tournament as this is. This is what I want to just say because we had yeah. thirty-two fighters. Obviously, we seeded everybody's numbers one to thirty-two. Okay. And at the the side of the bracket on the top left-hand side at number one was Fadenator, and on the right-hand side of the bracket at number two was Driz. Wow, so that's I want crazy. to say shout out to the matchmakers for perfectly for predicting who the best two players were and who would be in the final. Wow. So they did a great job, which means both guys had similar roads in that Driz, the number two, fought the number 31, and then he fought the uh, the number 15. And Fadenator fought the number 32, and then he fought the number 16. So both guys had sort of an appropriate level of competition to get through to this point. But both guys had to fight old legends to be here. Fadenator had a tough matchup with Dirty Dave, who was one of the best grapplers around, and he showed he could hang with him in the grappling, also beat him up there a little bit, and also ultimately 2 0 would that former ESFL longtime competitor, longtime veteran, ESFL live competitor. Driz, he has to get past Suave Jamie, who anyone who is watching the ESFL has heard the name Suave Jamie, knows how credentialed and how good that guy is and how long he's been around. And he gave Driz a serious run for his money. He took a round off him. It came down to a best of three, and ultimately, Drews was able to come out on top. But now, comes down to it, it is the number one and the number two guy going head to head for a thousand dollars, Rob. I mean, what you what are you gonna do with a thousand dollars these days, you know? Dude, you could go to McDonald's like uh ten times for a thousand dollars these days. So these guys are really motivated and you could or you could buy like a new system, the other console, go dominate the other, you know, regional scene. I mean, what would you do with $1,000 if you won this tournament with your slick I Balian Jiu-Jitsu? Probably set up another tournament. That's what I'd do. Put another Let's go! <laughs> Just keep it going forever, you know? Like, call it out. That's what you should do. But no, look at this bracket, guys. I mean, this is this is fantastic. 32 players. I mean, this is a, a big tournament. This requires a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of competence from the fighters as well so big shout out to everyone for being involved and i hope everyone who watched it today enjoyed themselves okay we, we're not done yet we got the final but a lot of work obviously goes into these events and also a lot of competitors have to show up and compete so big props to everybody we hope you enjoyed it if you're wondering why we're still talking it's because they're not in the match yet so we're still going through it but if you guys if you, if you guys have a fight of the night from that list that you want to pick out um yeah we go Oh, wait, Rob, so this is the Alter Ego tournament, right? Who did you put forward from your community for the Alter Egos? I didn't put forward anybody oh. from my community. Oh, did you yeah. not do the... Okay, right, well... Because <laughs> I put Cobb Swanson in there, right? Because who doesn't oh, love Cobb Swanson? Obviously, he didn't make the final five, but that would have been nice to see, you know, Cobb Swanson coming on through. Is there someone you want an Alter Ego for that we don't have yet? That's a tough question. Uh, you know, uh, let's let's just get another Conor McGregor uh, alter ego. I think we might need one more Conor McGregor. You know, like maybe the one where he fought the uh, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan guy's first fight ever. Like first fight Conor McGregor, give him like a super nasty uppercut when he first bursted onto the scene. I mean, the problem with this is like, why would you? We've now got a five star Conor McGregor. Why would you play anything <laughs> less than a five yeah, star? You know, here's the here's the three and a half star debuting Conor McGregor. Like, no one's gonna play that one. So, once you give someone a five star alter ego, there's there's no point. Alter ego Jackare, that could be fun. Jackare, that be cool. I like the sound Yo, of that. Alter Some ego Brock Lesnar versus, not versus Kane Velasquez. Uh, when he when he when he won against Shane Carwin. Shane Carwin. Okay, all perfect. Right. It's pretty good. He did kind of nearly lose that fight, though. You know, he got smashed to pieces. Give him just hundred block on the ground. You know, hundred block <laughs> on the ground. That fight could have been stopped. To be fair, that was that was a <laughs> close one. No, Brock Lesnar though, he hung in there. Props to him. He did get that win. So that's pretty good. Brock Lesnar. You think people would you actually, Rob? You don't even wrestle that much these days. You gonna play Brock Lesnar? Yeah, just grab him. You know, do one of those crazy punches, those crazy like straight stepping punches that you know he's so notorious for and. Yeah. ragdoll him we don't have a prime jds that would be nice Ooh, you know that'd be dangerous. i'd like to see some you know there, there is room i feel like for new fighters to come in i know that there are reasons some fighters aren't included but there seems to be like if we're getting fighters back from the pride days why can't we have takanori gomi someone like that wouldn't that be fun at lightweight cool. you know just some like 
old school pride guys that we, we don't have anymore. By the way, feck it in my ear. It's like, yeah, it's laughing. He loves Takanori Gobi. But like, I get that we can keep having alter egos, but why not some new fighters? You know, we're all about updating the roster with the current fighters, of course. But there's some old school fighters that need some love. Namely, a guy called Kid Yamamoto. Okay, where is he? Where's Sexy Dude. Yama, you know? Actually, maybe he wouldn't come in because he, he's been to, you know, other promotions, but, you know. Yo, we need Frank Mir and we need Randy Couture. Well, you're not going to get Randy, mate. I don't think that's... Come on. Uh... I want Randy, man. Uh, I could I could put you to a <laughs> he few... He was in EA MMA. I could put you to a few... Yeah, exactly, Rob. You've just answered your own question there, mate. <laughs> Look, to be fair, Fedor's in. Anything's possible. Pride Mayhem Miller would be sick with the bleached hair. Oh, yeah. Michael Bisping version? It, yes, that's, sir. Well, that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably the worst version of Mayhem Miller we've ever seen is the Michael Bisping version. <laughs> Sakurabi yeah. version. We'll have that one. Machida. I'd be down for a Machida. Ooh, that would be good, oh, actually. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get Tank Abbott. Mm. No, uh, yeah. Don Fry. Don Fry would be a great addition, wouldn't it? That'd be cool. A bit of Don Fry. No, it's some more lightweight fry. guys out there. How about Shinya Aoki? You never thought in the UFC it would never happen, but like, I don't no, know who that is. Dang, I need to. You need, you need to watch more. I've done Brad. a documentary on Shinya Aoki. I'm gonna send it to you, bro. Like, send it to me, mate. I need some. I need to do this. Need some some info. Okay, Rich Prime Frank RDA. Win. Blake Tyler, I put I put in for Prime RDA. We didn't get the votes, you know, but I was Dang. down for Prime RDA. Benson Henderson, he was in the game. Ooh. He's gone now. All right, we're ready, guys. Thank you, thank you for staying patient. We are ready to go to the finals. All they right, are ready to pick. Here we go. We got Fadenator, Driz, number one, number two. They've come all the way. Thirty-two down to two. It's down to this. Thousand dollars on the line. Let's go to the picks. All right, go to the picks. Looks like the only difference between this fight and the other ones is this one's for the money. Five rounds instead of three. Right, Bailey, and still a best of three. I'm, I'm pretty sure best of three uh i know yeah i think it's the best of three but five rounds yes, best of three right. five rounds here we go so championship rounds ladies and gentlemen you see faye near locking into uh, prime 2018 dc against stipe miocic and you gotta think daniel cormier is the better pick in this exchange no <laughs> no <laughs> you think no, stipe is better stipe is my number one heavyweight pick okay he has the cardio <laughs> he has beautiful boxing he has a killer okay. straight right he's my pick too yeah, DC. What are you complaining about? That? <laughs> so the pick, the pick, Prime DC. He can elevate. He can That's dunk. That's true. Steve Hayes pretty good though. All right, we're going to see. Right, let's see. Here we All go. Right. We're locked in. Best of three. Five rounds. Plenty of time to play for. Of course, Fadenator has got DC first of all. Driz has got Steve Fadenator coming forward with that pressure, as you will do with DC. That's something you have to deal with an entire fight long, as that DC player is going to be in your face. Yeah, I wonder if Fadenator is going to like go to the ground because you know Driz from watching his his boxing, his ability to connect. Like right now, boom, just to surprise his opponents. I, I wonder if Faye's gonna just take him to the ground. Ooh. I think he will. No, what he needs to do is clinch him and then give the underhook and throw an overhand right. He'll probably knock him out. You know, I've seen it. I've seen that. He might. Yeah, I'm giving really... these guys tips because they be listening to you, Bailey, and that's unfair I mean, favoritism. Oh, 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 we're getting it. We're getting it. No, we're doing, we're <laughs> See? Not. Here we go. No, the pressure All from right, Faye Doubling up, tripling up on the lead hook. Breaking through that block already. Driz got to get his feet moving, Rob. Yeah, definitely. And with five, with this being five rounds instead of three, you got to, you know, it's a totally different game plan. You can't just unload. Ooh, body kicks are going to be big. Body shots are going to be huge in this fight so far. But Fade Nader keeping that pressure, Bailey. He's, he's got some good kicks, you know. Not necessarily as much at heavyweight. But you do want to definitely make use of the full arsenal, especially if this turns into a boxing match. I always feel like the person who can incorporate the kicking game is going to have a slight advantage, but... Stipe is a, a kind of a fighter you can build into, you know? I feel like the longer the fight goes, Stipe is kind of like an attrition fighter, kind of like a Robbie Lawler pick, where you can start chipping away and chipping away. You don't need to do a lot of damage, you can do little bits. But that being said, Fadenator is the number one guy coming so in true. this tournament. And here he is right now, putting it on him. Lovely job right there as well. Connects, that's a huge uppercut, and then slams him down, but still able to get up with like a late denial there. But yeah, you're right. Miocic is an attrition fighter. Like, the longer the fight goes, he's got great stamina. He's got great recoverability. I don't know if he has that recover perk like Dustin and, and some of the other guys. But yeah, he is great in the later rounds. 
he can start to get some body health off of DC as well, who does have a good gas tank, but DC weak to the body, and we know how good that left hook is. Like, we've seen the game plans for both men in the fights, how they can both win, you know? And that left yeah. hook to the body is a high-level move, and we hopefully would love to see it. Hard to throw body shots when your back's against the cage and moving backwards, though. Nice two. And again, that's a great shot that you have with Stipe is that banging straight right. Man, Fadenator is swinging for the fences with DC. Good pull counter there, good defense. And you're, you're not seeing Driz able to connect the same way on his opponents like he was previously on Fadenator. Fadenator find really good. Yeah, and Fadenator is going first, landing, and then it feels yeah, like yeah. Driz is trying to go second and he's not able to land. Like, Fade's already gone. He's faded out. Right. After these shots coming. <laughs> That was a quick first round, though. That was hell. That was really fast. Probably leaning towards Fadenator. Yeah, for sure. That lead uppercut uh, dropped him early in that round, or at the midpoint of that round. Fadenator starting off strong, and Fadenator is just, he's hes him. But Driz is also him. He's him on the right against him on the left. The two Titans colliding right now, guys. And, and right now, Fadenator's getting the better of these exchanges. Everyone has said oh. that a lot in chat. Both guys have been called him. But this is number one and number two. This is what we thought was going to happen. And here we are witnessing it right now. Lovely roll underneath. Composure is going to be important you know, for both. Oh, hey. oh my God. Lads to the body up top with a head. Fadenet is so good at that. Level changing. The combinations, especially when they're rocked. Bloodying up the nose. Oh. Another uppercut. Fadenet has been money with the uppercut all night. And this is not looking good here, Rob. Definitely not. Two power uppercuts with oh. DC. This one goes to the body. I feel like if you if you would if he would have went to the head right there, Bailey, and it would have been a third rock. Long straight right. Misses there. Roll underneath is, is really good until you get hit with that uppercut one more time. Have we seen Driz like beaten up and not have like an early advantage so far? I don't know if we have. I don't think so. I mean obviously the squad Jamie fight kind of lost in the final round. He was doing very well. But he's getting yeah, he's yeah. Oh, rear uppercut Ooh. as well. And just the hand speed of DC that's really helping. It looks like this one's in the bag already. Dang. Round two. Fadenator takes run, uh, game number one. I don't know. Is that the pick or is that the player? We're about to find out in this next fight because, man, those uppercuts from DC. Oh, get the blood splurting out of the face. Absolutely devastating uppercuts. And he landed like three, four, maybe five clean ones. And it's... Usually Driss, who's like landing, almost makes the uppercut look like a looper. Like you said, he's so good at the uppercuts, but he ate his own medicine that fight. And it was just so toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And Fadenet was always going first and always winning the exchanges. It kind of got to a place where Driz was, you know, he got knocked out there while exchanging, but he didn't really have an option because he'd been beaten up so many times. You get to a certain point where the only way to stop someone coming forward, you can't move out of the way, you can't block anymore. You have to throw back. And he, you know, was getting caught in those exchanges as well. So it goes to show, Rob, I think he needs to start a little bit faster and start threatening and giving him reasons not to come forward. They've switched round now, though. Fadenetta with Stipe, Cormier now in the hands of Driz. Yeah, let's see what Driz decides to adjust. But Driz has always kind of fought like that, like off his back foot. He kind of lands perfect combinations, kind of bewilders his opponents with these nice... Two punch, three punch combinations off the straight. He lands that uppercut, but man, Fadenator just kind of took him by storm that first fight. But oh, oh. this time he connects. Maybe it's the DC diff. I mean, DC is so good, you know. Like, it's so on this beat. version, he, especially. He's got power. He rolls underneath everything. There's something about being that low to the ground that really helps out at heavyweight. I don't know what it is. There's the uppercut up the middle, though. Fadenator is going to need that because Driz does level change nicely, but it also lands him right into the uppercut bit more space maybe as well rob for fading a he needs yeah for sure maybe in this third fight we'll see a dc mirror but right now driz has to get this win if we're going to get there and now fading here going for a takedown but driz able to defend against it rolls him against the cage and now throwing knees viciously but nice defense Ooh. big rear uppercut coming out touching with the jab keeps level changing man you just feel like that uppercut's gonna just catch him <laughs> Doesn't seem to be in a big For rush. Sure. We we talked about him needing to start faster, Rob. He's definitely done that. Driz? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Driz still, still kind of fighting off his back foot, though. Fadenator kind of still putting on the pressure, using, like, in and out footsies, and, and he's just kind of cracking with that straight lead hook as well. So, Ooh. oh, and then the knee. Hey, Fadenator's so good. 
with all those level changes, I mean, Fadenator is obviously going to make those reads. If we're seeing it, you bet believe Fadenator is seeing it. So timing those level changes with the knees, it just gives him reason not to. And you can already tell he's starting to back up just a little bit. And that's perfect range there for that straight right from Fadenator that time. Yeah, and Fadenator is flicking that left stick, sides or backstepping a bit, you know, putting on the pressure, but not he's, he's coming in, but he's dipping out out of range, kind of making it, it hard to for Driz to see where he's at, when he's going to be there to hit. Ooh, Ooh. that's a good shot, though. I mean, this is $1,000 on the line, <laughs> Rob, right now. Faden Ayer coming forward, knowing that a win here is going to give him a grand, you know, the composure required to not, like, slip the controller out of your hands with the amount of sweat on it. <laughs> for sure. For sure, it's 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 a lot on the line, and and I'm at the edge of my seat. I'm nervous. I can't imagine how these competitors are oh. feeling in there. And it's not just the money; it's 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 everything. You know, you're it's just kind of it's like uh, you get awarded for all your hard work that you've put into the game. I mean, as much as Fadenet was starting to move forward in the second half of that round, the damage done early by Driz still pretty apparent. Like he is ahead on health. Wow, that was very close right there. He is a bit of a head, head on the head. Oh, nice elbow. The elbow. Fadenator. Yeah, definitely a nice way to kind of get himself back into the fight towards the end of that round. I'd say it's kind of an even round. Look at that. They're just exchanging there. Yeah, I think Fadenator took that round with his pressure. I think he's up 1-0. A very even round for sure. And here we go. Round number two. Five, five minute rounds, guys. And... And already, Fadenator has a knockout victory over Driss. Driss desperately needs this win to push it to a best of three mirror match. But right now, every time they're backing up to Fadenator, throws that perfectly rank, those perfect range pop shots with a straight on Cormier's dome. Oh. Rear up dink, and dink. Oh. Man, trying to put the combinations together now. A good head movement by Driss, but it is always ducking. I mean, he, obviously, he's timing the ducks very well to get away from the shots, but... That does tell Fadenator the uppercut's there, and he ducked into that one. Had to block up, though. Right hand, lovely work by Driz. Can he move forward and take advantage of it? Right in the face. Driz wants that overhand. Ooh, Watch out. On the seat. Man, this is getting intense right now. All the chat so has intense. Everyone's just, like, transfixed on this fight. Watching what's going to happen. Can Fadenator, who's looked so good so far, stay in the fight. It's another in. uppercut. Gets an elbow. Rocks him and not going to get the double leg. The takedown defense on Cormier, so incredibly high. And now against the fence, who's going to get the better of these exchanges? But on the break, he's still beating up the block. Yeah, forcing Driz to kind of back up a little bit. Not able to capitalize on that on that fence position. And oh, 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 vicious body shots. Driz digging to the body. Rear uppercut is lovely there. The back step, fading there, probably trying to set that long straight right up needs a little bit more space to it. Gets caught on the way in there. Ooh, both guys extending the combinations now. And we know that's when trouble comes out. Fadenator just needs this win. But Driz is so determined to not let it, let it happen. And he's been fighting so well with Cormier. These knees all got blocked that time. Now Driz oh, has no. a little momentum. Has yeah. him against the cage kind of trapping him there a little bit around the block and this is the problem at this point in the fight you can't just start taking these shots on the block anymore you're gonna have to start pushing forward because they're gonna keep chipping you lead up got one two so quick the upkeep keeps it in it but that was so so devastated oh another right his hand. nose cut on the face Driz season going hard in round number two one minute left one minute 14 left and and now Miocic Fadenator wobbling the knees are weak oh. ducks that uh, ducks that 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 elbow Bailey and Driz on fire. Surely one more big shot is gonna end this. Less than a minute left in the round. Can Fadenator hold on? His nose is completely mangled. Trying to throw back bombs, but the block is going down. Driz has taken some damage though, and now Driz is backing up. So back and forth, so many momentum shifts here. And now the nose busted on Cormier. He's got to breathe. That short-term stamina is going to recover slowly. And Fadenator taking advantage of the situation, putting more pressure on Driz. But the, the clock is oh. ticking. They're throwing. They're exchanging. And this is what we talked about with Stipe, man. Like, he's almost like Robbie Lawler in that. Like, if, if it's down to the wire and we're both hurt and we can only throw one or two punches, Stipe's pretty good in that area, man. He's pretty good at just tagging you with the two. We're coming down to this moment now, so 
We'll see as the combination start to slow down from Driz. Can Fadenator find those shots to keep him in it? It's going to be very tough for Fadenator. Uh, Driz has more stamina in the tank. I feel like he's got more head health, a little bit more block. So if Fadenator wins this, man, this is going to be crazy. Stranger things have happened. Left hook, Ooh. right hand. And that's having that stamina advantage. Like you said, he can chain those things together. All pull. Slips that two on the return, though. Fadenator is still so aware. He must be so desperate to get a finish right now and win himself $1,000. Lead uppercut sneaking in there for Driz. Fadenator doing a better job of getting the distance he needs now. All these shots are landing right at the end of his punches. And he's got the head held flashing, but there's a right hand right there. Lovely work. Gets out of the way of the elbow straight. And then the lead hook sits him down. But once again, the up kick keeps him in it. Crazy. Hit him with a straight lead hook on the way down. And now you're seeing Fadenator just trying to block, trying to sneak out of the way, slipping and ripping, but still coming forward, Bailey, and then throwing combinations. But Driz is right there. And the the, the stamina on Fadenator is starting to dwindle away as oh. he's eating big bombs. Oh. oh, right hand, left hook, sits him down. I don't know how many knockdowns there's been in this fight. He's got no block. The two puts him out. He turns into a sack of potatoes. What a finish from Driz. It is one apiece. <laughs> $1,000 is still on the line. Dang! And that's what you want to see. You know, I had a feeling it was going to go to a best of three. These guys are so evenly matched. Both guys utilizing the DC diff. I think we're going to see a DC mirror match, but maybe not. Maybe it's going to be a Neo chick. Who knows? What do you guys think in the chat? But wow, that was really back and forth. It felt, it felt like Fadenator had the early advantage, Bailey, in, in that first round, but then Driz kind of rallied in that second round, took some momentum back, put it in his pocket, and started landing those beautiful DC combinations on the inside. Think, think, think. I think they should just pick Aspinall Jones and be done with it. <laughs> we'll just see that instead. I think you're right. I think we are going to get the DC mirror match. The five star Cormier. It's going to be a fun, fun time. You know, they should really nerf the wrestling of this heavyweight Cormier because his back was so messed up by this point. Remember, he sneezed and threw his back out. And he almost <laughs> had to pull out the fight because he sneezed. And then he also fell off the stage. Ouch. Remember that? At the press conference? I don't remember that. He fell out of his chair and everyone was oh, like, no. oh, God, the fight's going to be cancelled because we all knew that he sneezed and threw his back out and now he's falling off the chair. I mean, it was fine. I'm just saying, this version of Daniel cannot wrestle at all. So, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Damn, you're dropping the straight facts on us right now, Valian. My job is just this nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I Here love we it. go, though. Right. Already, though, the wrestling, we mentioned it, and, you know, such an advantage if you're the DC on top, obviously, but the get-ups from Daniel are very, very good, so we'll see if there's a movement back to the feet. This is Fadenator on top right now. Drew's on the bottom. This is brilliant. All fires get to use. What was that? Go on. I was going to say, they could have changed shorts or something, couldn't they? I know. <laughs> I was like, how do you tell the difference now? The gloves. I was going to say, it's so cool, these the way the tournament is set up as he gets a nice denial. You get to see them use both fighters, and then you get to the third, you get to see the evenly matched near match. I actually really like it. Yeah, it has worked out really nicely. I don't think anything has been unfair, and we, we've seen that it's all on the skill of the player, not necessarily the pick many times, Ooh. so... That's good to know, too. For sure. Ooh, these uppercuts. Launching those... artillery, man. Like you said. Ooh, you see those ones with the body, though? Three from Fadnator. That's cooking. Driz, early. I mean, it's definitely Fadnator's best weapon is his uppercut. Anyone who fights him needs to watch out for that in the future. Ooh. Ooh. Headshot. Kind of blocked it. I want to see some jumping switch kicks, you know? DC's got him. <laughs> oh, the oh, uppercuts would keep saying it. We keep saying it, and this is the problem they had in the first of the best of three. Ooh. Is that Driz just let Fadenator start to creep ahead too early. He's got to meet fire with fire or stay out of these exchanges. Yeah, for sure. Fadenator's just attacking that body with body uppercuts, and he's kind of switching it to the uppercut and, and just putting on so much uh, pressure on Driz, really making him think, is it going to my body? Is it going to my head? I don't know, but the, my gas tank is starting to get punished. Oh, look at that head kick up there. Nothing doing, but I like he's mixing it up. Every time he shows him that level change, Rob, the uppercut is like the second shot that comes afterwards. There's the takedown. That was so well quick inside time. trip. Yeah, and, and you know, the speed of those takedowns from Cormier is going to be super high anyway, so it's tough to stop. At the same time, we've got really high level takedown defense, but the timing was there. Way to go by Fadenator to win the striking. Let's get a takedown and secure this round.
We haven't had to go past the second yet, have we? Even though it's five rounds, or maybe we went to the third. But let's see if this yeah, one goes maybe. a little further. Just attacking the body. I think he just wants to beat it up. And look at the damage, man. You know, those short shots, you might think, oh, it's just pointless. It's not really. You know, you get your GA, but it, it adds it, up. It, if you've done a fair amount of damage to the body, especially, then it really does start to add up. Yeah, for sure. Takes a little bit of the stamina away as well, those body shots. And uh, Bayonetta starting out really good in this third fight. Another uppercut lands. This one to the face of Driz. Driz trying to let those hands go with DC. You know he's so spectacular oh. with his combinations, and he just cracks them, and he just eats it. Bayonetta just walks right through that one. Yeah, did big damage, though. I mean, that was a great shot by Driz. It wasn't enough to win the round, though. We go to the second. This might be the most even fight we've had all night. I don't know. They've all been so good. But this series is, is so razor close. These guys are so similar in their skill level. I mean, this is such a great matchup here in the, the grand finals of the 32-man Community Day UFC 5 tournament, guys. Here we go. Round number two. Forward still, Spadenator. Driz has to find a way to, to get himself out of these uppercuts or try and counter them. What would you do, Rob? Ooh, if I was, uh, who am I? Driz. Okay, I'm Driz. All right, uh, if I'm Driz, I am looking for that body uppercut and I'm going to block uppercut counter as best I can, or I'm going to slip that uppercut and just hope for dear life. Block low, slip left. The problem is right now, Fadenet is putting out volume and Driz is not meeting it and it's just hitting his block. Now he's letting his hands go, but he cannot just let Fadenet walk forward and throw combinations. That's much better with those elbows. Give him a reason not to. Stuff's to take down this time. Driz still wants to stay in this fight. Framing with the double knees. One of them got through. And no break there as well. That one lands to the head. I love the single collar attempt now. We're mixing some dirty boxing in. Yeah, Driz is, is doing a good job doing some good damage like in these in these clinch positions just a little chip damage and and he's kind of getting ahead a little bit on the head health the uppercut there lee took we know how bad that uppercut has been cracking the chin of driz i think driz is having a problem because when he goes first fadenator is just so elusive but if he waits fadenator just attacks non-stop this is good yeah. work though the riddle of fadenator it's like a dominic cruz you know he'd make you chase him and then he'd hit you. And then if you don't chase him, he'd just swarm you. Fadenator Cruz. That one doesn't like stick it. too well. No, it's, it's Fatty the Batty. That's what we've been saying so <laughs> far. But this is a good round for Driz. This round two. He's finding the mark. He's throwing out the volume at the same amount. He's beating up that block. But it's still anyone's round. 100% Driz trying to get in there. Nice deny. You see the judo throw. Fadenator trying to get the fight to the ground. Boom. Little check hook counter. Lands flush, and, and now this is anyone's fight. Such an even exchange here. Boom, Ooh. left hook, left hook lands for Drizzy. Jab straight right behind it. Fading it almost feels like he's taking this round off a little bit, right? Yeah, it's just like a, it's very uh, oh. slow paced here. I think they don't, they, both of these guys are very much minding their P's and Q's here. They do not want to lose. They know what's on the line here. I mean, a thousand dollars is what's on the line. The problem oh, is you yeah. can't be, you can't hesitate right now, man. You gotta just flow. You can't think about that. You can't even really game plan right now. You just gotta react and trust in your training and all the work you've been putting in up to this point. Because if you start to think right now, you might start freezing up and overthinking the situation. Now fading it, coming forward a bit more, putting these combinations together like he was able to in the first round. But the adjustments from Driz, Rob, have really been Ooh. impressive. The block gets shattered. But I think Driz has done a really good job finding a way back into this fight. Beautiful. 100%. At the end of that round, just unloading a nice combination uppercuts uh, through through the block, connects. Ooh, look at that sidestep uppercut. I think that was Fadenator. What I've noticed about Fadenator, too, is he's got the ability to fight off his back foot. He, like, has different approaches. He can, like, switch it up, come aggressively, like you said, and then kind of fight off his back foot. He, he just has so many different tools. Whoa. But, yeah, Driz is... Is connecting. He's done more damage. He's he's landed oh better God. shots throughout the fight. This has all been about Fadenator, but Driz is leading the head health and giving him all he can handle in this mirror yeah. match where we go skill for skill. Oh, Woo! left hook though from Fadenator. The lead hand work is starting to add up. And there's going to be a time where those lead hooks are going to be absolutely devastating as his head health starts to dwindle down. Ooh, knee to the body, knee to the body. Driz on the attack, has him against the cage. He's throwing the one-two. 
Good work. Straight right coming out. There's that uppercut again. Needs to be careful though. Oh, he walked into it. Over swinging with the big hooks. And he gets rocked. Recovered well though. Looks like a block counter on that left side. Driz got to be careful with the right hook. Because Fade is looking to block counter him. Oh, this is getting him. tense. Against the cage right now. Ooh. Uppercut oh, snaps the is, head of Fade Nader. It is getting tense. Three minutes on the clock in this third round. There's the level change. Not going to get it. Only that one takedown that kind of threw him off. The big now, deny right there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, Ooh. low blow, Stop low shot. blow. Ref. Here we go. <laughs> These uppercuts, man. Fade Nader is just swinging. You're right, Rob. If he can time the uppercut, get a slip right hand, man. He can do some big damage. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And he'd stay away from that left hook, too. Fainer's not really throwing too many right hooks. Yeah, he's not. I mean, that that's the thing, isn't it? They uppercut, so you need to slip. And you don't want to slip into the right hand. Oh, good job with the rock. Straight, knee hook. He drops him. Drears on top. Is this going to be it? A thousand dollars. He's won a thousand dollars. Driz against the odds, the number two. It's been about Fanny the Batty, but it's Driz who gets the composure win. What a freaking performance, man. He lost that first round, brought it back in the second, and put him away in the third. You have your community champion, 32 men, and it comes down to the number two seed, Driz, man. He is that guy, Rob. Yeah, we had two hymns, but we d we figured out who the, the main hymn was, and that was incredible. Driss throughout the tournament just impressed me be beyond belief, and, and that this fight here, I was like, okay, Fadenator's coming forward. He's adjusting, coming aggressively, backing up. He's landing vicious. He landed that vicious uppercut early with DC and, and had Driz in all sorts of trouble, but Driz proved that he could withstand adversity at the highest level, and that highest level was his opponent, Fadenator, who fought brilliantly throughout the tournament, a monster in the tournament, but man, Driz tamed uh, Patty the Batty. Uh, Fatty the Batty. He tamed the great legend, you know? So, damn, Driz has arrived, Balian. He has arrived, the champion. I mean, I when it was down to those two at the end of the day, I don't think many people thought Driz was going to come out on top. Yes, he had beaten Suave Jamie on the way, but Fadenay was the number one guy. We had this Fatty the Batty narrative going on all day over at prime time. <laughs> they could not stop saying it when he was coming through the early brackets. And he was looking absolutely dominant. He won that first matchup in the best of three right there. And it looked like it was going to be domination again, even when they switched picks. You know, and he had Stipe. It really looked like he was going to take that one. But no, Driz says no. He stayed composed. He figured him out. He found his timing. And he ended up putting him away, Rob. I mean, all the fights were close. But I think the best man won at the end of the day, especially on the night tonight. $1,000 for Driz. $300 still goes to Fadenator as well for all the work he's done today. Yeah, I can't even imagine how it feels. You know, Driz is probably just the rush of emotions, accomplishment, just money in the pocket, uh, you know, a little bit of clout. You know, he's on the scene. Everyone's going to know his name. I mean, Driz is, is surging right now. So just proud of him. I mean, thank you to all the competitors that, you know, just keep bringing these exciting fights to to the, the audience, to the commentators, to the to the different promotions. Shout out to Primetime. Shout out to Nugs at UGFC for handing us the baton like we were in the freaking olympics you know the mma olympics right here we all came together uh as a community and we put this we put this on for all you guys i hope you enjoyed bailey and always a pleasure becky in the bag boiler z always i always have a great time so thank you guys for allowing me to do this as well so shout out to all y'all of course shout out to the 32 competitors that showed up today of course to primetime mma who hosted the first portion of the card as well and of course, all the years for staff to help make this event possible. Thank you to all you guys for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. These community events are always fantastic, especially when there's money on the line. You get the best players showing up. You get the best players competing and trying to win that cash, take themselves home some money. And there you go. It's official. Driz, the UFC 5 Community Day Tournament winner. And it is a day tournament. It took all day. <laughs> and this is where day. we ended up. Alter egos were great. I love the format. We all had a good time. And I think that's just about it. Shout out to all the leagues, of course, yet yeah, involved who could make it happen. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next event. It's coming up. It's going to be a big one, Rob. We've had a great time with UFC 5 so far. We've still got updates and, and new things coming out, of course. And um, 
you know, it's just been a good time at the ESFL, man. We've done so many shows now. Yeah, always a great time. And uh, we're just going to keep trudging on forward, keeping the hype train rolling and um, just just keep coming up with creative ideas. And I think we got to name a fight of the night. I don't know. Zayna in the chat. Fight of the night it's, is going to uh, be Swab, Swab versus Driss. Yeah, I think Swab versus Driss definitely. And All performance right, of the night, man. I mean, honestly, I think performance of the night there, you, you got to go spooky uh with no not no not spooky um who was through in there uh, in the the third place matchup dex versus mix mix with Dexy. the, oh, the yeah, eddie Dexy alvarez the eddie alvarez win right. over the prime corner is super impressive. oh yeah we'll have the rest vote there as well through so thank you all for joining us we appreciate you and uh yeah we will see you next time stay tuned jump in the esfl discord if you want to sign up if you want to be part of the community if you want to join a gym if you just want to get better at the game if you want to train go ahead and join in there and uh, the next event will be announced there for us on the socials for more information. But until then, we will see you next time from us, the ESFL, myself, Bailey, and Bruce Lee, Rob, all of the ESFL staff, primetime, everyone involved. We will see you in the next event. Till then.